I'm coming back to you because <laughs> did you hear the phone go in the background? No, you didn't because there's no microphone on. Oh, God help me. God help me. I've got to get this to-do list sorted out. I hate to-do lists, but I've got to do it. I've got to stick to a to-do list because I didn't switch the mic on. Uh, good morning to you. It's the 7th of November 2021 and the theme is let go and believe. Thank God for Debbie who called me because <laughs> my phone, my, my cell phone switched off so I don't get any interruptions. Uh, the theme is let go and believe and it's Isaiah 55 verse 9. See, we're not perfect are we? We're not perfect. Okay, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go over to the comments and uh, I'll give the announcements afterwards, but we're going to go over to the comments and I'd like us to pray for Canada. Uh, first of all, I'm just checking my monitor to see my sounds going through okay now. Uh, I'd like us to pray for Canada as a nation. Um, and also, I, I know there are some Canadian friends there, Mary Lou, Yvonne, um, Jer um, Jeremy Sinard, I believe, has got COVID, uh, Peter Jackson and his wife. Uh, if we could just uplift those. And of course, our dear friends, um, the Dougals, if we could pray for them. Uh, you, do you know one thing is, I, I don't think we should let go until we see it right through, right through, because oftentimes, you know, we pray. I know when we used to do 10 crusades, we pray for the Ten Crusade, but we never prayed for the after effect. In, in other words, the counter attack, the backlash from that. So let's go and say hello to a few people, see who we've got on. And then uh, I'm going to take you to uh, the map and I'm going to ding the bell. And we're going to just take two minutes, two minutes, and then we'll come back. OK, right. So let's go there and uh, hopefully uh, some of you are going to make comments that you're not hearing me on the sound but that's fine uh, John Bergen, blessings John from Australia uh, I'm always trying to work out if it's morning here, it's evening there, good evening John Steve Farmer uh, morning John and everyone Steve at Glenfield Hospital good morning Steve Valerie and Jim, greetings to all from Leicester. Greetings to you, Val, Jim. Anthony Pepper, all morning, John, from Grey Marlow. Katia from Germany, good morning, dear John, and Whisperers from Germany. Uh, Diane Evelyn Clark from Canada, Snowy Barry. Amen, amen, amen. We're praying for Canada today, Diane. Anne Richardson, good morning John, and Whispers, good morning Anne. Helen Butler from France, good morning Helen. Uh, June Welsh, good morning Whispers from Aurelia, Ontario. Ontario, Ontario. <laughs> uh, uh, good morning June from Aurelia. Uh, Kathy Wilson, evening from Southland, New Zealand. Gorgeous day here today. Uh, okay, here comes the sound, no sound, no sound. <laughs> Emma, good morning, John, from a frosty Scotland. Uh, everybody's telling me uh, it's just me, but no sound, no sound, no sound. <laughs> Eric, God bless you, John, was just watching you in Toronto as the young lady gave testimony of your drunkenness, releasing her from years of control and wonder. Uh, that was a very powerful testimony, Eric. Uh, again, out of our hands. Uh, yeah, you know, we didn't know anything about that. Uh, Nancy, Sound of Music and John. Uh, my God, <laughs> no sound. <laughs> uh, uh, no sound. Uh, okay, Rosie, I'm sorry. Most of you are just telling me there's no sound there, but there is now. Good morning, John and Whispers and family. Good morning to you, Rosie. Uh, Kathy's telling me no sound. Ah. Uh, Okay, now, can you te text him? Good morning, everyone. Okay, I'm just going down till I get uh, still no sound. Hallelujah. Yay, sound. There you go. <laughs> oh, God. 
God, will we ever, Lord, will we ever get this right? Will we ever get it perfect? You see, when when a when a program's edited, um, when a program's edited, what they do is they cut out all these mistakes. But we're live, so that shows you we're live. Okay, but the sound. Debbie called us, by the way, so uh, I could hear the phone going in the next room, and I knew once that phone goes, I know that there's something wrong. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go back to the map. Uh, Okay, yay, yay, sound, here he is, <laughs> sounds on, yes, yay, it's December, John. yes, I know, Nancy, <laughs> sleepless in Aurelia, wow, uh, none of us, it was the bottom thing again, Mike, oh, good morning, Mike, great to have you with us from Minneapolis, boy, don't you sleep because you're retired now, aren't you, you can have a lie in and sleep in of a morning. Margaret Gill, nice to be all with you all again from the secret place. Uh, Eric, yay John, we have living sound here and it's December, not November. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, Alan McManus, blessed to be here. Guys, shalom, shalom to you Alan. Uh, checking in from Queenstown at the end of our day, still daylight. Oh, it's very dark here. Uh, Janet, you know, the mornings are getting, sh you know, darker. Uh, uh, Mike, your wife had COVID and recovered. It seems to be a lot in Florida as well, Michael. Um, Canada. Uh, Jella Thomas, John, it's lovely to hear you. Evening, night, morning, afternoon whispers. Uh, Nancy, big praise report today. My friend Louise has awakened and has been taken out of ICU. She, he is taking, talking and off the ventilator. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Uh, Leona Gay, Townsend, beautiful weather from Texas. Oh, don't get me going now. Leona, uh, the weather's raining here. The weather outside is atrocious. La, 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 la. Uh, Michael and Sally, 3 a.m. in Florida. Julie Ashmore, good morning all from Derbyshire, UK. Uh, reference Jim and Sue Dougal, they are getting better every day. Sue's oxygen uptake is even getting better than Jim's and he is doing so much better too. But let's continue to pray, Eric, because, um, you know, till the right through. Uh, good evening to you, Yana. Alan McManus, loud and clear near Car Carlisle, that's on the border of Scotland. Uh, <clears throat> Joan Byrne Cassidy from Florida, good uh, good evening to you, Joan. Is it evening? No, it's early morning. It's early hours of the morning. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> I thought so. I thought because uh, Debbie's on nights. She's working nights, so she doesn't get home till late. Probably goes straight to bed, tired. Uh, they're working her hard. Uh, <laughs> good to hear, Mike. Um, okay, let's see quickly, quickly. I'm going down the list here. 61 Fahrenheit here and windows open. <laughs> Beautiful breeze. It's not often enjoying. Wow. <laughs> Ah, uh, but the anointing is quite lovely. Let's flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. There you go, there you go. Okay, okay. What we're going to do now is uh, let's pray for Canada. I'm gonna, we're gonna just do two. I'm, I'm gonna go silent for two minutes. I'll ring the bell, and uh, when we go over to the, to the, uh, you can see Canada there, just above Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Seattle, above that, Vancouver, Toronto. Let's pray for Canada. Oh, Canada. At the ring of the bell. And let me see, do we have them? Let me just, just bear with me while I just see if I can bring Canada on. Do we have Canada on here? Seattle, Toronto. They, okay, so there's the Toronto one, the second from the right. Um, and we'll go by the clock. Once it reaches 12, I'll ring the bell and then for two minutes, I want you to pray for people and for the nation. So we're coming up, so get ready. Here we go.
Okay, there we go. I, I see that uh, Leona, you're saying there's no sound. There was no sound on purpose. We're doing a two minute silent prayer, uh, praying over Canada. Um, I'll have to put a little overlay on, on that map to say, you know, silent prayer for Canada or for whatever. Um, that's another little job we've got to do. Are we having a silent retreat, Eric? <laughs> Um, okay, so there we go. Um, it's good to do that, isn't it? Isn't it? Don't you think? I just love that silent time, just that quiet time, just you know, just to still everything and just to concentrate on him. Uh, that's okay, Leona. It's, I need to put something up there so anybody that's tuning in doesn't see it or doesn't hear it. A drinking retreat, Nancy. <laughs> oh, okay. Our theme today is uh, let go and believe and it's Isaiah 55 verse 9 but before we go there let me just give you some announcements I'm upgrading the uh, studio on Friday um, uh, upgrading the broadband uh, and the studio itself so I won't be on air Friday uh, because the guys are coming I think could be coming from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and I have to get everything ready now Debbie had, had said to me last night my daughter why don't you just use your iPhone dad and go live you know outside but I have to be here for when the engineers come so Friday there'll be no devotional morning or evening and then we're into next week We've got a long weekend into next week and that will be our final week up to Christmas. We'll break for two weeks. The, the whole thing about this is sustainability. Um, you have to be able to sustain your race. And when you're, when you're doing a long race, you know, when I was at school, we used to do, and I don't know whether you call it the same in, in America, but we used to call it cross country. A co cross country race was for a few miles and we'd run. And the secret was is you have to get yourself in a steady pace, you know, get your momentum right. And also, uh, you, you know, you had to plan for the long, the long haul, the long race. You could go at it full belt right at the beginning and run out of steam. And a lot of people do that in the Lord. They go at it full belt, but they are not steady, you know, pacing themselves. And... There's a lesson there to be learned. So uh, two week break also. Uh, what are you saying Eric? Doing my best Eve, no sound and nothing right now. Uh, yeah, that's true, Janet. We need to do, uh, I need to do an overlay for people traveling in. Now, I don't know why you've lost sound Eric. Reboot and, and come back in again. That might help you. Um, so when you're doing a race, um, you know, especially a long one, you have to pace yourself. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Amen. Right, today's reading, let go and believe, Isaiah 55 verse 9. Now, oh, one more notice, Sunday, uh, Lord willing, because although she's confirmed and I'm still trying to get hold of her, She's not answering my messages, you know. Um, uh, what's her name? <laughs> oh, it's a morning. It's a morning here. My, my brain's not working. Ah, uh, oh dear. Never mind. It'll come back to me. Isaiah 55, verse 9. Let go and believe is the title. And let's pick her up from verse 8, if we can. Uh, the readings fish thank you <laughs> thanks Nancy and Melinda Fish Melinda Fish will be with us on Sunday 8pm UK time uh, that's right Steve reboot I've, I have to do that a number of times it's the technology uh, let's pick it up from verse 8 uh, or let's tell you what pick it up from verse 6 seek the Lord Yahweh I'm reading from the Passion Translation. When he makes himself approachable, call upon him when you sense he is near. Do you ever have those times? 
Um, do you ever have those times when you really, I mean, I know that the Lord is there. I know, I know he dwells within us. I know he's always with us because he said he will never leave us. But there are times when you, when, there are days when you feel a special a sense of his presence you're very sensitive to his presence and that's what the uh, writer is saying uh, let me go back to that um, seek the Lord Yahweh when he makes himself approachable verse 6 we're, we're reading the context call upon him when you sense he is near and that's just what we've just referred to now the wicked need to abandon their ways and sinful ones need to banish, oh, let me just get that right, sinful ones, sinful ones need to banish every evil thought. Let them return to Yahweh and they will experience, where are we, where are we? They will experience his compassionate mercy, yes, let them return to God, for he will lavish forgiveness upon them. I love those words, lavish. You know, doesn't it speak of generosity, you know, over and above, undeserved favor. He will lavish, what does it say? He will, uh, let's see. <laughs> He will lavish the end of the paragraph there. He will lavish forgiveness upon them. Isn't that wonderful? I am so amazed when I think about the goodness of God. But what, what the writer is saying here is when you have those times where you feel his presence, and as we said before, his presence never leaves us. But when you feel his presence, when you have those special times and you feel his presence, pray. Pray, release your prayers to heaven. Uh, let's go back. Um, as the snow, oh no, for my thoughts about mercy are not like your thoughts. And my ways are different from yours. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. Isn't that so true? Isn't it, isn't it so true? One of the key things in the revival in 94, sorry about going on about the revival, but you know, we need to keep these things alive. We need to tell it. Those of us that are still around that it went through it need to tell generations that are here now, young people that are uh, leaders that never experienced what we went through in 94, we need to tell it. We need to tell it. We need to tell the story. We need to witness about it. But in 94, one of the key, and I've said this before, one of the key areas for people getting released was to release forgiveness. Because it's a very hard thing to do when you've been hurt or somebody's uh, trod on you, trod on your toes. Uh, the, the, the natural inclination is you want justification, you want revenge, you want, uh, maybe revenge is a strong word, but uh, you want, uh, reckon, uh, what do you call that, uh, compensation, <laughs> compensation. And do you know when you hold on to unforgiveness, it locks you up, it locks you up. And God is saying here, look, uh, I'm, well, let's go back to it. Let's have a look at it. Um, my thoughts about mercy, verse 8, are not like yours. My ways are different from yours. And then we go into our text. See, do you see the importance? Do you see the importance of reading the context? Because if you just read that text, my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are, you know, as the heavens and, and the earth you know, are separated, so is my way and my thoughts compared to yours. But when you read the context, you realize that the prophet is speaking about mercy. He's speaking about forgiveness. And um, 
we need to do that and it's the hardest thing to do isn't it in the natural when if, especially if you're walking in the natural uh and you're walking i say in the flesh because we are in the flesh aren't we we do need we're in a body we have sensitivities we have weaknesses we have failings you may say well no i don't almost oh, yes you do <laughs> you do every one of us do every one of us god designed it that way he designed the body he designed the members that we need one another we need one another you know uh your strength can be your weakness your strength can be your weakness uh you know because you rely on it you rely on your gifting because well i can do this it's natural and that's why oftentimes we come into these places where you know like a, the lord is just I, like i felt in 94 for me when i got drunk it was like and i told people it was like somebody had come into my office taken all the filing cabinets out and thrown them in the air and I couldn't hit my points, I couldn't think straight. But you know what? It got me into a realm that was above this earthly realm. It got me into a sphere of doing, just being carried along by him, being inspired by him, lost in him. Now, it says here, you know, coming back to the forgiveness, you know, it is a major thing it is a major thing because and I'll guarantee you I'll guarantee you every single one of us have been hurt and especially by somebody in the body of Christ but God designed us that we need one another and we need to just release forgiveness we may do that sometime in one of the silence uh, times when we ring the bell just release some forgiveness to people that have hurt us that doesn't mean that you open yourself up to be, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, you know, I remember asking a, a, a well-known preacher from New Zealand, and I can't, so well-known I can't remember his name. I'm going back about 20 years. Uh, and he was talking about this, and I said, well, what about if this person's hurt you and you know that they'll do it again? You know, in other words, they manipulate you, they control you. Uh, it's it's to be wise and not to come under it again am i making sense do you know what i'm what i'm saying but to release the forgiveness to love people but still be as what is it as wise as serpents harmless as doves that's the way we've got to walk and we do need discernment we do need discernment but the prophet is speaking there he's saying look my ways are higher than your ways do you remember when jesus was uh, uh, debating with the Pharisees, the religious leaders, the experts. He said to them that it, you know, he's talking about sin. He said it's it's a sin is, is not even what you act on. It's what you concentrate on. It's what you focus on in your mind. You can sin just in your mind. It was a higher level, a higher level. So that's the scripture there. Let go and believe is the title. Isaiah 55 verse 9. Uh, let's go back to it and just read the text again. Um, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. Uh, uh, let me just see what people are saying. Let me just go back. Let me just bring you in on the conversation here. Alan, uh, boundaries are needed. Yes, Alan, yeah. It doesn't mean that we just leave ourselves wide open. And Do you know, oftentimes that's how people came under a controlling spirit. That they thought, well, I've got to forgive. And But no, no, you still have a boundary, as Alan said. Um, let me see. Uh, what are you saying, Emma? Innocent as a dove and wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove, wise as a serpent. Uh, what are you saying to Alan? I'm st learning this all. We're still learning it, Emma. You'll still learn it when you're 70, 80. If, if you get to 80, you know, you'll still be learning it. We're human, you know, and it's not till we take off this body 
with its imperfections, you know, and we get this glorious body. But uh, that, that's the word for today. Let go and believe. Now, you can take that title, let go and believe, to mean let go of everything. No, he's not saying that. The title is tied to the scripture. And that's the very important thing. And I have to say that again. You know, we need context. We need a framework. We need a wineskin. We need a flexible wineskin. We need the word of the Lord. We need his scriptures. We need to be soaked in those and not just go after every experience that's out there. I'm amazed how quickly we receive stuff without testing it. You know, and we clap when somebody says, oh, I went to this place and I went to that place and everybody claps and say, no, I want proof. I want proof. I've traveled. I've traveled. I've traveled. From since I was 20, I've been traveling the globe and I've seen things. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, not everything that's said from the front is correct. Not everything that people say they experience. You've got to see, you've got to go through the wall and see, is there a wolf underneath there? <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to say any more than that. It doesn't mean letting go and just believing nilly dilly. Got to have sound word. You know, got to be a workman that needeth not be ashamed, that can rightfully divide the word of God. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go to the uh, scripture reading. Eric, yeah, um, keep a sweet spirit, so needed today. It is, Eric, but also so needed today. You know, so needed today is discernment. And I do think that the charismatic church, you know, the stream we're in, and especially when we get into the mystical realm, uh, you cannot take what everybody says just on face value. You can't. You have to test it. And uh, and that's not being unbelieving. You know, that's being wise, that's being discerning. And we need to be discerning because what's coming? And, uh, and I love, and you know, we've been dwelling on the love of God, but what's coming is, I don't think that we're going to get away with just being glib, about things. I think there's this, you know, judgment must first begin at the house of God. Let me use another word rather than judgment because it seems harsh. But, you know, God is cleaning house. He's cleaning house. And uh, where there's been grace and where there's been lenience for people and time for people to turn, we're coming to the end of that. And what Margaret was, sh uh, what Margot was sharing on Sunday and what we looked into yesterday about this 2022, about two things running together, you know, the uh, counterfeit and the real. You've got to be discerning. You've got to be discerning. Amen, amen. Uh, some crazy teachings out there, Nancy, yes. Yes, there are, there are. But you know what the sad thing is? People flock to it. People flock to it and they've got itching ears. That's what the scripture says. In the last days, they will flock and they'll just receive anything. And we've got to. That's the one thing that I, I hit here every day. Personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Time set aside to seek his word is revelation. And when I say his word, I'm talking about anointed revelation. The spirit of God teaching you because you have the spirit of God inside of you. It is the gift of the Father to us, individually and corporately, that he can teach us, he can reveal things to us. You don't need a guru. <laughs> oh God, I'm getting onto my... <laughs> uh, I see Mike, you, I see Mike, study to show thyself. Oh, you're speaking old English there. <laughs> thyself approved. Very interesting, wouldn't it be? Very interesting to have a look at that word approved in the Greek. Uh, okay, so there we go. There we go. Let's go to the reading. And um, that's what I love about these. Uh, that's what I love about these um, mornings. 
and evenings is the framework for us is, is this uh, Passion Translation um, you know I hear his whisper daily devotions that's the framework and sometimes we we go a little bit outside of the framework but it's good it's good it keeps us on track let go and believe beloved I want you to submit your thoughts to the revelation of the cross you cannot think your way into salvation nor can you mentally comprehend my power the power that lives inside of you for too long you've tried to understand how to get a breakthrough how to overcome the enemy or how to seek the sick healed how to see the sick healed through your hands instead I simply want you to let go and believe come like a child free unhibited believe beyond the confines of your brain <laughs> I don't think that's good that's why I was crucified at the place of the skull to pierce your mindsets with the power of my resurrection life and with revelation power that is much higher than mental ascent I gotta just move this over the mental ascent of the world's greatest geniuses you mustn't lean into your wisdom but instead radically accept what is unconventional yet true I am outside of time space and rationalism I am in you with you all around you I hold the universe yet can fit all of my glory inside of you nothing about me makes sense to your limited understanding so stop trying to figure it all out and enjoy the adventure Isaiah 59 verse 9 as high as the heavens are above the earth so my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours amen amen doesn't that doesn't that just capsulate it all doesn't that say it all amen 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 we're out of time uh <laughs> I just <laughs> oh you gotta go Steve God bless you anyway God bless everybody Shalom Shalom uh, for those in North America see it uh, well my time tonight your time noon thank you thank you for being with me and uh, we got there we got there in the end